Before we begin, I just want to acknowledge that we're meeting on the traditional ancestral unceded territories of the First Nations and Native American peoples. Here where I am in Vancouver, these peoples are the Musqueam, Stolo, tsleil and Squamish nations. But I know where many of you are, as we were just discussing, you're on the land of other nations. Always, but especially during this time, let's remember our connection to our sisters and brothers in these nations. And let's pray for the day in which we might be in right relationship. Welcome. Welcome to Living Interfaith. Know that the whole of you is welcome. You're not asked to leave who you are in your own homes. Please bring who you are in with you. But what you are asked to remember is that everyone around you has brought who they are in with them as well. And all, all of goodwill are welcome. Bruce and Sharon. They want to mute everyone else, Kathy. <clears throat> Thank you so much. So we have just a few announcements. Um, immediately after this session, we're going to have our council meeting. So I hope the people on the council remember that. I know Dora Lee has been uh, sending emails reminding folks. So we'll just have that. Uh, but that's open to everyone. And um, we'll just be talking about what some of the changes going through. I know many of you saw that Eloisia has decided to switch paths and she's sort of focusing on setting up her own project now. Uh, so that means that things have changed a lot for me as I try to figure out what to do without Eloisia. So we're gonna be talking about that and uh, some other things that are gonna be coming up. Thank you. I know tomorrow, uh, Salal and Cedar is gonna have their online worship at 12.30 Pacific Standard Time. The theme's gonna be on contemplation on scripture and nature. And um, I know I don't know the login information, but Bryn, I don't know if you have that, if you maybe want to put it in the chat, if anyone's interested. Um, I'm not sure I have it yet. I'll check. Okay, no problem. It's okay. And I think it might, it, it's something starting at 1130, but then at 1230, it's, it's transitioning into something else. So I'll be there at 1230. I'm not sure what's happening at 1130. I'll, I'll take a look. And if I do, I'll put it in the chat. And if anyone's interested, if I don't have it now, I can like just email me. I'll put my email in the chat. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, so Lala and Cedar is really fun. Usually they do outdoor worship, uh, but with the weather and with the social distancing, they're figuring out other ways to keep the ministry going. So, but it's really peaceful. It should be fun. And then uh, the Living Interfaith Church. Uh, so I actually, I need to start promoting their services more because, you know, we're the, um, the second congregation after the Living Interfaith Church and happily right now, our services rotate weekends. So every Saturday, there is a Living Interfaith service. And I know next weekend on uh, Saturday, October 24th, they actually meet at 10.30. Uh, so you'd have a little more time to sleep in. 10.30 to 11.30 Pacific Standard Time. And then Reverend Marie, she's going to be preaching on the topic of All Saints Day and remembering those who've gone before us. Um, so I'll have to start, when I send out our emails, I'll have to start including those services in there. 
And that way, if folks would like to attend both, like I know Stephen and Rebecca and Jim, my dad do, uh, then that'd be really nice. And that way there's always one available on the weekends. Uh, and then the following thing is our monthly meditation. Won't be this Tuesday, it'll be the following Tuesday because uh, it's the last Tuesday of the month um, on October 27th from seven to eight. And um, Sukhvinder, our friend, always runs those. Uh, and it's wonderful. It's just whatever meditation she's been working on lately. She has this amazing breath of knowledge. Uh, so I'm not sure which one it'll be this time, but you're always welcome to join us for that. The Zoom link is on our website. Those are always really fun. So does anyone have any other announcements they'd like to make before we get started? Okay, thanks so much. Let's just come into silence for a moment. Let's give thanks to the creator for all that he gives. The harvest moon has shined its brilliance over our homes. And now as we store the harvest of our work, the creator gives us sustenance. The earth will now rest through the coming seasons, storing the energy needed once again to feed our people. That's from Michael Tenderheart Markley. May the sun bring you new energy by day. May the moon softly, softly restore you by night. May the rain wash away your worries. May the breeze grow, blow new strength into your being. May you walk gently through the world and know its beauty all the days of your life. Then if you want to unmute, we can do a passing of the peace. Peace, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you. Peace, shalom, salam, love. <laughs> peace blessed, to all of you. Blessed be. Peace, everyone. Peace. Peace, everyone. <laughs> Peace, Peace everyone. Peace, Peace everyone. Yes. Peace. Thank you. Bruce and Cheryl. Which one? When they are Oh, hey, oh. 
Beautiful, thank you. Now, if you'll join me in our joint affirmation, we come together in peace. We sing together in joy and with love. We worship together in one house, a house with names beyond number. Our paths are many, our beliefs are as leaves, and the tree that we cleave to is nourished by the light of compassion, justice, and mutual respect. May our lives, our beliefs, and our actions help to bring about the world of love we all seek. And let it begin here. This is the time when we pray for a few moments for something in our world. As always, there are so many different things we could be praying for. Uh, but right now, this week, I've been thinking a lot about the people who've lost their houses and their businesses and the fires. Uh, the big forest fires have continued in California and Oregon through now. I have a friend who just drove by Mount Shasta yesterday, and she said she was still passing some fires. And even here in Vancouver, there was a big fire that destroyed five businesses and some houses uh, just two nights ago. So there are Unfortunately, it was already so difficult for people who just were making just enough money in order to take care of themselves and pay rent. And now for those who've lost everything, just finding places to stay and figuring out how to move forward. So if we can think about the unhoused folks and those who are going through big tragedies like these and hold them in our hearts right now. Let's just pray for a few moments. Thank you. Bruce and Cheryl. This is a song by Joseph Natalha. He's a Saskatchewan Cree composer from, from Saskatoon. There's a middle section which we'll sing for you and you're free to sing along with us of vocables, as they call it in many indigenous cultures, just singing untexted praise on syllables. We are a one people. We all come from one creation. We are we are all one nation under one great sky, you and I. We are all one people, we are all one color in her. Yo, 
verse 2. We are all one people. We all come from one creation. We on high. We are all one nation under one great sky. You and I. We are all one people. We are all one color in His eyes. We are. That was beautiful. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad we're recording these so I can listen to it later. Thank you so much. So as I often say, now is when I would usually pass around a basket, but since I cannot, I'm not quite talented enough to do that, I'll just put out there that if anyone wants to donate to the community, I'll put our, uh, I'll put our link in the chat. Um, and then are there any other uh, causes or organizations or anything that also need some donations or some help at this time? Please feel free to tell us now. Okay, thank you. Bruce and Cheryl. <laughs> Receive to you, I give. Together we share, and from this we live. From you, I receive. Thank you. So as I mentioned before, uh, Marie just got ordained yesterday in the United Church, which is so wonderful. And he, I was hoping he would be able to uh, give a talk today on decolonizing Thanksgiving. And then because of all of his meetings, uh, because of that, he couldn't be here today, but he recorded um, a very special message for us. So his sermon is right here. Hopefully, can we all see this? Is this you can at least see Marie, we're in good shape. Okay, and let me make sure that I am sharing the sound so we can hear him and not just see his pretty face. Okay, there we go. And this is Marie's message on the occasion. Hello, good day and good morning. My name is Marie Pruden. I am the National Executive Minister for Indigenous Ministries and Justice for the United Church of Canada. I bring greetings and I give you thanks for allowing me to speak to you today. It's a pleasure to, to be uh, asked to by, by Kathy and I, I, I 
give you give you thanks, Kathy, for allowing me to to do this and to be to be able to uh, at least do it by by recording. <laughs> but it, it's 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 a it's a pleasure, and I'm I'm very happy, and uh, I bring you greetings and and to all of you, my all my relations. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you today. And I've been asked to speak today about about decolonizing the idea of Thanksgiving. Uh, as you all know, we just in Canada just recently celebrated Thanksgiving this last long weekend, and um, and it, it's. It, I'm so sorry. I'm getting a couple messages that the sound is faint. When I look here, I don't know if I can make it louder. Is everyone able to hear? Okay. Can we? Okay, I have. There is, there is an option to connect the audio on your laptop to uh, the Zoom call. Do you know how to do that? I did. So it's the share sound. Yeah. Um, I did that. Um, is your laptop volume all the way up? My laptop volume is all the way up. It sounds a little bit faint here. Um, what if so you mute yourself when you're watching it? Can you do that? I can, but then I think you can't hear it. Oh, okay. No, you, you, you can hear it. If your mic's muted, the sound still comes through from a share. It does? Okay. I'm going to try to mute myself now, and we're going to try it. I'm very sorry. I hope... Please let me know in the chat, and I'll... I, it's important that we hear this, so thank you. It's It does tend to have a, a bit of a mixed blessing when you think about about it from, from many Indigenous people across this North America. Um, just for the the fact of of where and how this this um, holiday actually started but at the same time as an indigenous person i i feel that i i think about 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 the idea of the word in in the the title of this holiday thanksgiving and that's and that's the word of 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 thanks uh, uh, the idea of, of gratitude, and, and that's what I'm drawn to when I think about that. Um, but I'll, I'll I'll get to that uh, to a certain point in my my talk here. But I do want to wish everybody well at this time, especially during this uh, time of the uh, COVID uh, nineteen, the pandemic, and the social dis dis distancing and such. I do know that it is it is it is a uh, uh, it's it's on everybody's minds, and and I think pertaining to this time of year, and at this time that we're all dealing with the 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 pandemic, I, and and thinking about our families and loved ones that are that are far, you know, um, even for myself, I, I I'm I live here in Burnaby. I should actually I should do my introduction properly, <laughs> but I, I I am living here in Burnaby, BC. Um, and and my family and my home is uh, home I call home is in Alberta in Treaty Six, uh, in north northeast central Alberta, in uh, a town called Smoky Lake. Um, it's a rural community, and I was born in Edmonton, uh, but I was raised in Smoky Lake and also raised on on the res reserve as well. Uh, uh, Good Fish Lake First Nations, and uh, also affiliated with the uh, Sad Lake First Nations, and that's where my family come from. Uh, I'm Cree. Uh, I am son to Henry and Evelyn Pruden, uh, grandson to Charlie and Betsy Pruden, and grandson to Douglas and Florence Steinhauer. I am descendant of Reverend Henry Bert Steinhauer, and is one of our first Indigenous um, ministers in 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 our in our lands, in our territories, and and um, was a United Methodist minister. Um, so I'm fourth generation to Hen Reverend Henry Bert Steinhauer, and um, uh, being able to to take take on ministry uh, was was a big choice as well. But at the same time, uh, you know, we we're not here to talk about, about about me. But I just wanted to introduce myself and and do it in the proper way and in a good way. And I want to talk about the idea of giving thanks. 
And, and that's the idea of, of Thanksgiving. And, and the idea of decolonizing the idea of Thanksgiving and, and making it more into the word of the words thanks and not into the, I guess, the, the traditional roots of where, where this holiday has brought us to be th this day. I just want to say, too, that uh, there is a difference between Canadian Thanksgiving, I feel, and American Thanksgiving. And we all know that it originated from the American Thanksgiving tradition. And we all know that story about uh, the American Thanksgiving, how the pilgrims uh, shared a, a feast, a, a dinner with the, the local indigenous peoples uh, from the area that they were at, as the general story goes. But within that story, we we also f get more in depth of it and and realize why they were sharing sharing the, their their meal or their the turkey feast. Um, it was because the pilgrims at the time didn't know how to live off the land. Uh, the pilgrims uh, were weren't able to grow their food. weren't able to gather a good harvest and were very sick and were were not used to the the conditions that they're in and so they were starving and so the local indigenous people as many indigenous people are uh, are taught in our traditions is that you live and you coexist with your brothers and sisters with your and this is what we say our relations in a peaceful way so when somebody is in need of that love and support you 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 give them that love and support and from that understanding of of the thanksgiving story the the local indigenous peoples gave to these people gave to these pilgrims gave them gave them what they had you know uh, what they needed, uh, they needed some medicines, they needed some food, they needed some uh, some warm clothing, you know, it, just to get through the winter. And, and that was the idea from what I understood the story to be. And that's the reason why the pilgrims were having this, this dinner with the indigenous people. If that dinner even existed, I don't know. But that's the idea is, is that they were giving thanks for sharing this meal with the indigenous people but you know as as history takes us that uh, that um the the state that we live in now is not really what uh we we feel in in, in a lot of indigenous communities the uh, of the, the 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 that good relationship and that thankful relationship so it, it becomes very that the, the time of Thanksgiving can become very jaded for many indigenous people. And, and so it makes people really think about that uh, and, and, and how the course of history has not really upheld this, this idea of, of, uh, of, a, of a good Thanksgiving story. Now that's the American Thanksgiving story, and I really feel that you know, as Canadians, we took on that tradition of Thanksgiving. Uh, we do celebrate it earlier in the in the year compared to the Americans. Americans celebrate in November, uh, which is kind of their kickoff to Christmas season. Uh, but we in Canada celebrate in October, and I partially maybe because of the weather, it's it's kind of it's kind of warmer. It's it's our fall feeling time, and. That fall feeling time that comes just you know a couple of weeks before the the winter solstice or the, the you know the the change in, in into into the seasons in like um, at the end of October, and we have harvest and this is a time of harvest time a time of collecting the times of seasons changing the times the time where where you know you're you're gathering your foods you're gathering. You're gathering your 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 fields. You're, you're gathering your hunts. You're gathering your times to save up for the winter. It's harvest time, and so it feels that we're we're in that time of of 
of collecting and and and, and nourishing ourselves. So for for me, Canadian Thanksgiving has that harvest feel, that time that where where we are able to to collect and and receive, and there is that relationship, and there's that relationship to the land. I always think that uh, when we think of the word thanks as in, in the, the idea of thanksgiving, I I think of of being being grateful for things, grateful for another another season, uh, grateful for all the seasons, and again, it, it just it's a back to that relationship of the land. When we talk about relationships, uh, we talk about being at peace with one another. The idea of seeing each other. And one th one thing that I always think about when I think about Thanksgiving is it's just a reminder to always give thanks. For many Indigenous people, uh, for from a Cree teaching and from what I've been taught by family and, and loved ones and my grandparents is, and my parents is was to always be thankful every day. So every day being a, like a Thanksgiving in my mind. So being thankful day and night. And by that, I, I was always told to the first time as soon as you wake up in the morning and you and you get out of bed and you put your feet on the ground you say thank you to the creator thank you for the gift of life thank you for another day thank you for everything that's been that's behind me that's with me and is before me and then at the same time as your as your day goes and evening comes around and you're ready to go back to bed you do the same thing. You have your feet on the ground before you, before you lay your, your head down to sleep and you say thank you again. You say thank you for this day. Thank you for this night and allowing me to live and to be in, in good connection and relationship with everything and everyone. Thank you for everything behind me. Thank for everything that's with me and thank you for everything that's in front of me. But the idea is always to be thankful. And that was always what I was always taught by, by family was to always be thankful. Our prayers are always in, in is always of gratitude. Uh, I was always taught that the greatest prayer that anybody can have to the creator, to God, is just to say thank you. That's all that you need to have. Because that connects your heart, your mind, your spirit to the creation around you, to God, to Creator. So, as as we as we pray, I I I'm I'm always been always taught to always start my prayers with saying thank you, and always end their prayers by saying thank you. We can never be thankful enough for everything that we have, uh, the good and the bad. It, it it's all it's all blessing. And sometimes we, we just don't see it. So I want to talk uh, briefly about the land and and share you a story about a trip I took as well. But I'll, I want to talk a little bit first about the land. And then this is my connection to what I mean by being giving thanks and about about relationships. And it always starts with the land. You know, the land is the most precious and gracious gift given to humankind by by God the land in all her beauty and bewilderment teaches us to be humble people T that anything taken from her by humankind we must then give something back to her in place that keeps harmony and balance in a cycle of life many times when we when we indigenous people pray we always give thanks to mother earth for her gifts of life each day and to my understanding, so do the Jewish and Christian faiths. And when one takes something from the land, medicines or food, or even a kill from a hunt, prayer, tobacco, and ceremony is offered for this gift of life that one takes from the earth. 
Learning the lessons of restoring harmony involves individuals and their community as they participate in the ceremonies of the tribe. It is in the seasonal, temporal, geography-centered, rigidly followed ceremonies that one learns the ways of worship, gratitude, and well-being. Ceremonies always begin with prayer. Many tribes use a sacred pipe filled with special tobacco, first offering the pipe to the four directions, then to the sky and then the earth, and then to all my relatives. It symbolizes the inclusion of all creation. Then the smoking of the pipe by every person in a circle symbolizes communion and accepting the gift from the Creator and Mother Earth. Dances such as the hoop dance of the Ojibwe represent the circle of the universe. Other dances remind the tribe of its dependency and on and relatedness to the creator and the created. In the ceremonies, harmony is restored and perpetuated for the future. In the ceremonies, indigenous nations express our connection with primordial time and space, with cosmic reality. Nihio is what we call ourselves as Cree people. The title Cree was given to us by the French colonizers of the time of conquest. Nihiao means being from the land. And being from the land, we are meant to connect with the land, live with the land, and protect the, for, and protect the land. We are responsible for the land. Our people believe that the earth and all the creatures that live on it are a gift from the creator. This beautiful land of lakes, forests, rivers, plains, and mountains is a gift from the Almighty and must be respected and treated properly. And the Almighty prepared this land for us, and the hand of the Almighty guides the earth through the seasons. The land is like a gift, but also a sense of connection and spiritual intuition that no treaty or government authority or Indian status card can give an individual. The concept of talking to the land and listening to the land is a trait that most Western society believe an unhumane thing to do. The idea of possession and ownership is subjugated by the belief set by European colonizers and a possible directive by the doctrine of discovery. One of the first, I want to share a story now and end this with, with you and, and maybe end up with a prayer of thanks. It was, it's about a story I, uh, about uh, my trip to uh, southern United States, uh, went to New Mexico and Arizona, and this one is particularly about my trip to uh, New Mexico. So on our trip, one of the first sites that we as a group had was to visit the Sandia Mountain in the Pueblo Territory just outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And the reason why I mention this site is for a few reasons. The time we spent learning up uh, going to the peak of the Sandia Mountain, it was enjoyable and, and seeing the area we, where we had lunch was a remarkable experience as well. The Sandia Mountain itself was more than what I was expecting to see as well because the peak that is over 10,000 feet up was hidden from our eye at the base of the tramway that we used as as group of visitors. And as part of my travels, I always make it a point to, to leave a tobacco offering <laughs> at certain places. I, I feel is needed for grace and gratitude. It's our way of giving blessings and thanks for all that is, was, and is to become. It's a way to connect to God and our Mother Earth and all our ancestors and guides and all our travels and paths in life. I always like to say that this land, this planet we call home, is my first church. The land sings and the stories of our peoples, and many people don't like to listen to the harmony that is a spiritual gift each day. Our land always gives us life and well-being, and we all need to pray and connect to that each moment we can because that's God's language, and that's the voice of our mother, and that's a song of our people, our ancestors, and all our relations. As we finally reached the, the cool but, but open sky and the peak of Sandia Mountain, I got myself ready to explore what I could, including the beautiful landscape of New Mexico and the city of Albuquerque. After a group uh, took some selfies and group shots of the grandeur uh, we stood on. 
my student advisor, Deanna, announces that we had a short time to explore and take in the sites. From that point on, everyone was dispersed on their own to explore and see the sites they can. Uh, needless to say, this is one short church service, but I can make the best of my time, and so I did. I looked for a quiet area near the ski pass and forest terrain uh, and took some needed pictures of the landscape and, and ventured to look for a place to pray and leave an offering. I took the moment and, and broke a few cigarettes and placed the tobacco in my palm, and I prayed. My loving God, my creator, you have brought me here with my fellow colleagues to learn and experience the wonders of this great world you created for us to live on. You brought me to this Sandia Peak and, and I give you thanks. This experience in our travels will be many and varied. Please look after us and allow us to accept the journey and the many blessings that face our path home. God, I ask you to continue to bless our mother. She grants us her grace to live with her and allow our relationship with her to continue. She is a great teacher to humankind. And of course, God, I ask for the support and guidance of our ancestors and the ancestors of this land to be with us now and through our travels. And I leave this offering to you, to our mother and to our numerous ancestors who have lived, loved and bled to be a people of the land. And I lay this here, my spirit and my heart are placed here as well for the respect of all your creations. Thank you, my God. May Jesus walk with me and my colleagues on our path today, tomorrow and for days to come. The light and life are now with us, now and forevermore. Amen. And as I quietly said my thanks and prayers, I felt the quiet of the mountain. And as I looked at my watch, it was time to depart back to the tram, tramway, back down to several thousand feet to the base of the tram ride. As our group departed, we once saw again the great sights as a Sandia forest terrain. But as I looked at the mountain, I noticed a great dark cloud, not a scary cloud, just a dark and mysterious one. And as I stood there watching this remarkable cloud, I noticed the shape of it. And what happened next was a blessing that I understood immediately. The cloud shape looked like a limb, limb of an arm and hand coming from the sky. And as I stood there looking at this cloud, the arm started to reach out to the mountain peak of Sandia as if it was grabbing something. And as I stood on the tramway watching this cloud move brilliantly before my eyes, the hand of the cloud opened up to the mountain. My eyes and my spirit lit up with joy and humbleness. And as the hand once opened up and grabbed at the mountain peak, the hand closed and went right back up to the sky. For my delight and understanding, God gave me a sign that, that the Creator was listening to my prayers and accepted my offering. And as this amazement happened before me, I knew my family's and my people's teachings are real, are a continuous blessing. And this experience keeps my faith in God and everything that I have learned from this land, our people, our ancestors, and our Mother Earth. The pure love and spirit lives within and amongst us. One just has to ask and be amazed by the hand of the Creator each day. So now I would like to leave you a blessing and prayer. I thank you, all my relations for who you are, and for the path that you all walk. May it be blessed with all the greatness that is before you. May the mysteries be many, as that is our creator. And may the land be there with you and support you on your journey. May you listen to her because she's listening to you, all my relations. I pray for you and I give you, give you joy, love and support. Thank you. Thank you, Creator. Thank you, Mother Earth. Thank you, all creation, all my relations. Blessings be with you. Amen.
It was so beautiful. So thank you so much to Reverend Murray. So, so grateful for his message today. Bruce and Cheryl, one last song. We shared this song with everyone last time as well. It's um, a song I learned from Leonard Eagle Cloud Howell, a Métis singer-songwriter who died this past year, sadly. A good friend and a lover of interfaith work. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Friends, let us go now in love and peace. And let's go have thanks for all that we have, all that the Creator has given us. Let's remember our connection to one another and just be so grateful for our community and for this land. Amen. Mm -hmm.